Good morning and a warm welcome to all of those tuning in from the United States and a good afternoon to our audience joining us from Europe. My name is Ilva Tare and I'm a non-resident senior fellow at the Atlantic Council's Europe Center, working closely with the Balkans team on our Balkans Forward initiative. It is my honor today to welcome President of Kosovo, Vyosa Osmani, to be at the Atlantic Council studio in Washington, D.C. President Osmani is joining us today at a turning point for Kosovo and the Western Balkans. This region is currently facing both unique challenges and opportunities to align closer with Europe, as evidenced by recent developments in Brussels. Russia's unjust and unprovoked invasion of Ukraine has highlighted the need to bring Western Balkans into the European Union and for a close EU-US cooperation in and with the region. President Osmani has often stressed the importance of these endeavors for a long time. The Kosovo-Serbia dialogue facilitated by the U European Union is at a critical juncture. The recent high-level meeting in Brussels between the two sides was a positive step forward, but there is still much work to be done to achieve a comprehensive agreement that can lead to a mutual recognition and normalization of relations. Kosovo has made remarkable progress since uh, its independence in 2008, but there are still many challenges to be addressed, including corruption, rule of law and economic development. President Osmani has been a leading voice in advocating for reforms and progress in these areas. We at the Atlantic Council's Europe Center strive to highlight the great potential of the Western Balkans and support this country's Euro-Atlantic aspiration, while keeping the United States and Europe actively engaged in the region. Madam President, uh, to start us off, as you are currently in Washington, D.C., to meet with high officials uh, of the administration, what is, uh, can you share with us your perspective on the present uh, state of relationship between the United States and Kosovo? Well, thank you, Ilva. Thank you for having me. And, and of course, a big thanks uh, to the work that the Atlantic Council is doing in supporting the Western Balkans and making sure that it remains uh, in an important point on the agenda of the U.S. administration. Uh, now, um, I'm in Washington for just for 24 hours this time, mostly focusing on Congress because I'm on, on my way to uh, be the keynote speaker for uh, a very important event that is, in fact, dedicated to climate change. But it does show the contribution that Kosovo is giving globally even to, to this topic. Uh, but, of course, uh, these meetings that I've had yesterday and will, will continue today have shown uh, the existential role that the United States has played in making sure that Kosovo has the support of this key ally throughout all of the important phases of its history, starting with... Um, of course, the most difficult ones, the darkest hours in our history, which was uh, the war, making sure that we have our liberation and freedom, and then moving on towards preparing us for declaring independence, and then uh, facing the next challenges, which was recognitions, memberships, and just laying out the foundations for an economy that serves all of our citizens and offers more prosperity. As you pointed out, there are a lot of challenges that we are still facing. However, Kosovo is a shining example of what democracies achieve when they stand together against tyranny and against genocidal regime, and they support an oppressed people that is seeking and struggling and fighting for its freedom and independence. And at the same time, we are now giving back. We are a small country. However, we believe that we have an important voice and we're giving an important contribution globally. We're serving shoulder to shoulder with US soldiers in peacekeeping missions. We have aligned our foreign and security policy with the United States and the European Union at a 100% level. And we're making sure that we stand with our allies in every uh, regional or global challenge that we're facing. Now, the relations, I believe, if, if I go even more concrete, mm -hmm. uh, are at quite a peak, and I'm speaking in positive terms. Uh, we uh, continue to receive the support of the United States in so many fronts. And while what you read on TV is mostly the issue of the dialogue, however, our relations are so much wider than just the issue of the dialogue between Kosovo and Serbia, a process with which the United States is supporting. So starting from the economic uh, empowerment of our country, which the U.S. is supporting, to issues uh, related to political developments, to supporting increasing uh, the level of protection of human rights to supporting us diplomatically in gaining more recognitions and of course in our strive uh, and our new bids for membership in international organizations. Uh, do we strive for more? Obviously there's always space for more which is why 
every single time I come to Washington, D.C., um, I also meet with Congress, uh, with both the House and the Senate, because they have historically played an indispensable role in making sure that every administration supports uh, Kosovo, as well as the Western Balkans, which is, I would say, a fundamental um, issue to be considered, given that Russia will continue to increase its uh, malign and malicious interest to destabilize the Western Balkans because of its intention to destabilize Europe at all. I will ask you about that, but uh, since you were talking about the cooperation between US and uh, uh, Kosovo, uh, you have previously stated uh, something that actually caught my eye, that uh, Kosovo has shifted from being an importer of stability to being an ex exporter of stability, uh, with uh, Kosovo soldiers uh, uh, joining US forces in the Middle East, uh, etc. Uh, what do you see as the next step Kosovo needs to to, to enhance cooperation with the US, with NATO? What can be done short of next official steps for the partnership for peace? And what do you need from the United States? We need full political support and we need the United States to play the leadership role in making sure that Kosovo gets its deserved place in NATO. We've been not just arguing, but working uh, relentlessly in making sure that Kosovo is ready for partnership for peace as a step towards joining NATO afterwards. Uh, but we do understand also from cases in the region that while joining the European Union is a much more complex process, even from a technical point of view, which of course is going to last quite longer, when it comes to joining NATO, as long as militarily you're ready, you do meet the NATO criteria. Um, it is, after all, a political process. You need to have the political support of allies. And the United States, as you know, is not just the biggest, but the most important uh, NATO ally that, that we do have. And we hope that um, there will be a growing attention when it comes to understanding that the more countries in our region join NATO, the safer the region at, as such will be. When Albania, North Macedonia and Montenegro did that, it did increase the level of security and stability in the entire region. And I believe that when Kosovo and Bosnia Herzegovina do the same, join NATO, it will have uh, a positive effect uh, wider than just within our borders. As you know, we do have a NATO presence in, in Kosovo, K4, with which we fully cooperate and coordinate. But we need to make steps towards partnership for peace because, uh, I mean, look at the paradox. Uh, until late, uh, a few months ago, we had Lukashenko's Belarus as a member of PFP. Uh, Serbia is also in PFP, and they don't even want to join NATO. They say that out loud. Uh, whereas Kosovo, the most pro-NATO country, not just in words, but also in deeds, has not been given that chance yet. I do know that the procedures are, are complex, because even for PFP, we would need unanimity. But what we've proposed is that we use the same formula that was used back in 2015 when Kosovo concluded its stabilization and association agreement with the EU where an article was added which allowed for the non-recognizers to feel comfortable because it said that their national positions are not prejudiced. But finally, they unanim unanimously voted in favor. So something like that could be used to push Kosovo towards PFP and later NATO. And my final point, uh, as part of the dialogue with Serbia, Kosovo received uh, guarantees from partners that uh, if we were, of course, to accept uh, the uh, dialogue agreements that were achieved in Brussels mm -hmm. and Ohrid that one of the issues for which we will receive an enormous support would particularly be PFP and later on NATO, which is uh, why, of course, it was quite a positive push. And uh, Madam President, you're right. It is a political decision also, but it is technical too. Can we say that you are already sharing information with your allies with, on the uh, PFP uh, uh, prospect and uh, or exercises together? What's the yes, so uh, in a few days, Kosovo will be a host country of Defender Europe 23. Uh, I would say the biggest exercise that happens in the European continent that is led by the United States. A lot of NATO allies will be participating in, in that exercise, many of whom will be hosted in, in our country. I'm very proud of the achievements of the Kosovo security force uh, that has been working for two years after we hosted uh, Defender Europe uh, 21 uh, to be able to achieve this. Uh, I truly believe in their capacities to showcase to our allies that we are operationally capable, but at the same time we have the will to give back in terms of contributing to peace and security elsewhere beyond our borders. We have been showing that by uh, being a country that 
constantly contributes to stability in the region, but also by serving in peacekeeping missions uh, around the world. And of course, we're working bilaterally until we become a member of NATO with other partners to be able to serve in that direction. There are still a lot of things that we need to do. However, we're in the right path and we need to make sure that while we work from a technical point of mm -hmm. view to fulfill this criteria, there's also the political path that moves parallel. And meanwhile, uh, uh, we have the war, ongoing war in Ukraine. What is your assessment of the impact of the dangers uh, that the region is currently facing in the light of the, of the war? Do you perceive any threats to Kosovo's uh, security and how do you evaluate Russia's potential to play a destabilizing role, not only in Kosovo, but also in the, in the region? Uh, you've heard us all before saying that this is a truly defining moment for European security, but I would say not just that. It's a truly defining moment for democracy as we know it. Uh, for that reason, what's going on in Ukraine, um, as we have all been arguing, doesn't only affect the people of Ukraine who have been victims of an unprovoked and horrible war that is waged by Russia, but it will affect all of the people of Europe. And in turn, when Europe as a continent is not safe, the United States is not safe. The rest of the world is not safe. So this is about international peace and security to begin with. Uh, so uh, why is the Western Balkans more important in this aspect? I would say because historically Russia has shown its interest to use that part of Europe to destabilize the rest of Europe. Uh, because as you know, for Russia, values don't exist. It's a malign force that wants to expand that malign influence elsewhere in the world, especially in Europe, because it wants to fight the values-based systems that the EU and NATO are. How are they going to do it? By making sure that parts of Europe are not stable, so that the rest of Europe constantly deals with us uh, in order to make sure that stability and, and peace is achieved. So uh, why Russia can be successful in that is because in southeastern Europe, they do have a proxy state, and that's Serbia, which is why we need to be more concerned. If there was no Russian proxy state in our region, obviously, we wouldn't be facing more dangers than, let's say, some other parts of Europe. Uh, that's why I believe that the attention of the West needs to continue to grow in making sure that absolutely no vacuum is left uh, because Russia, as well as China, will uh, use that, although for completely different interests. But uh, uh, there is, uh, of course, also a growing Russian influence through Serbia in terms of all of the weapons systems uh, that Serbia has been purchasing for years from Russia, lately also from China. And at the same time, the way how all of these weapons are used every single time, Serbia wants to create a crisis. Now, if we look at um, Russia's role, we can never look at it uh, separately from how Serbia is behaving, which is just a copycat of Putin's actions. And uh, while uh, Vucic, of course, sometimes says the right things, he never walks the talk. He does the exact opposite. So look at his actions. Um, to see that he has multiplied the level of uh, military, political, and economic cooperation with Russia. Uh, the regime there is an autocratic regime, no freedom of speech, no freedom of media, no civil society, and practically all of these big and deep connections with corruption and high-level organized trans, uh, transnational organized crime is being used to destabilize his uh, neighbors. And of course, all of this is at the expense of security of Europe, but of course, it goes in the interest of Russia. Madam uh, President, you are required, the uh, Kosovo, uh, the allies, European Union, United States wants Kosovo to normalize, to normalize the relationship with, uh, with Serbia. On May 2nd in Brussels, discussions kicked off uh, over the draft statute of the Association of the Serb Majority Municipalities. Does Escobar, after the meeting, uh, reiterated the importance that the two sides, particularly Kosovo, he said, I'm quoting, takes this pre uh, process seriously and to move fast forward, having it agreed between the two sides and to ensure its implementation through parliamentary and legal review. What is your view on the draft statute proposed by the management team and on the 11-point vision uh, presented by Prime Minister Kute? Uh, first of all, while the dialogue process between Kosovo and Serbia is extremely important, and of course the aim is uh, mutual recognition, that's where it should be uh, centered. 
uh, the notion normalization of relations is being used uh, by the European Union because of their neutral status. Uh, however, while the aim is to normalize relations between the two countries, the process should not be used to normalize Vucic in the sense of making him look as the pro-European leader, which he's not. Uh, let's all face it, we're dealing with an autocrat. If it walks like an autocrat, talks like an autocrat, quacks like an autocrat, it is an autocrat, autocrat based on all of the standards and his actions. I am so this asking is what about we're, Kosovo's I know commitment. what you're asking, yeah. but the context is extremely important yeah, we talked to, understand, to understand what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So in this sense, uh, we're dealing with a country that has never apologized for the genocide that was committed against my people. But at the same time, Kosovo has shown its willingness to extend the hand of cooperation, to be extremely constructive and engaging. So if there's one party that we should call for to be particularly engaged, that is Serbia. There are many reasons for that. Uh, there have been almost 40 agreements that have been reached in uh, Brussels. The list of Serbia's violations is very, very long. And it continues just in the last week or so, they've committed eight violations of this past agreement, which was achieved in uh, March and uh, April, uh, respectively. Now, on this May of second uh, discussions, only one of these elements was discussed. Uh, while there are attempts to make that one point more important than other, I believe that that is an extremely dangerous path to move the dialogue towards because we should not fall in uh, Vucic's trap, which is simply to delay and to drag the dialogue process. As the agreement that we've reached shows, every single point of the agreement is equally important and every single point of the agreement should be independently uh, implemented. Now, when it comes to the statute uh, that was proposed, one, by the management team, mm -hmm. that is a model for Republika Srpska Plus. It does show that Serbia doesn't really care about the rights of minority communities, but in fact, it cares about having an instrument through which it will continue to uh, challenge Kosovo's sovereignty, territorial integrity, and statehood. Whereas, of course, the vision that was proposed by the Kosovo government, it's mainly the parameters, the main principles, based on which a statute would be built, which of course uh, fully follows the constitutional provisions and at the same time the Constitutional Court decision of 2015, and finally the written position of the United States, which was published by Cholet uh, and Escobar. So the starting point should be Kosovo's constitution, not a proposal by Serbia, which aims at creating another Dodik Republic or worse in our region and which aims at creating more destruction and take us all back to the 90s. That should be unanimously rejected as an extremely dangerous model and not be seen as a basis for negotiations. And the 11 point vision proposed by Prime Minister? Kosovo? As I said, these are the parameters that are in line with Kosovo's constitution. And of course, this will be expanded okay. into so there a is concrete. Space for negotiation and discussions. Based on Kosovo's reach... constitution yeah. and the Kosovo Constitutional Court decision of 2015. As I have been stating in these past couple mm -hmm. of years, uh, according to Kosovo law and current constitution, Municipalities are allowed to gather themselves around an association, but they, what they have is a coordinating power, a power to coordinate based on the competences that municipalities already have, yeah. which is an already very high level of decentralization, and through which they can lobby for competences and for the rights of all of the communities that they represent in the municipalities that they lead. But this hasn't worked so far this uh, space that they have in the constitution. They did have the space. They, it is not our fault that they didn't use that right. They didn't need permission to use a right they that are is Kosovo already citizens. in the constitution. So you should be concerned about the Kosovo citizens too. Who says that, that I'm not that concerned that's what in, I, about the no, citizens? Uh, Madam President, allow me to say something. Uh, you belong to uh, this young generation of politicians that uh, really brought in Kosovo, but even in the region, hope for change, for better change, to see the future with different eyes and not let the past dictate the future. Is there a way 
a constructive aid to move forward, to look forward in the dialogue uh, with, with Serbia and to normalize the relationship? I, it is true that I do belong to a young generation of politicians, but I also belong to a young generation of politicians that is not fooled by the generation of politicians that served Milosevic. I'm talking about Vucic in this case, who used to serve as Milosevic's propaganda minister. If there's one thing that he does very well is exactly that, propaganda. We shouldn't fall for his propaganda. It is extremely important that on the steps that we make towards the future, we do not make the mistakes that were made in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Look, for some, these agreements might be just a piece of paper. For us, it's about our future. It's about the future and the country in which our children are going to grow up. We need to make sure that they never have to go through what we, our generation, had to go through. For that reason, we're extremely careful. Of course, I care about all of the citizens of my country. I care about the Serbs who live in my country. Because I care for them, I want to make sure that the best proposal in place deals with their individual rights yes. and not create an instrument for Vucic to keep them hostage and you <coughs> continue to use illegal structures turned into criminal gangs, which he is right now, to intimidate them and constantly challenge them and threaten them. If we want the best for all minority communities who live in Kosovo, we need to make sure that we use the best European standards. So, when I say that the statute needs to be done in line with Kosovo's constitution, don't look at Kosovo's constitution as something that is limited in terms of minority community rights. In fact, it is the most advanced constitution in the entire European continent. There is so much space in there which can be used by all non-majority communities to thrive, to make sure that they feel protected, they feel included, they are successful in their own country. All we need to make sure is that they voluntarily and they feel that they can use these rights. Right now they are being threatened by these illegal structures not to use these rights. Uh, also, uh, uh, we as Atlantic Council, we, we were in the region, we met you, we met with officials there, we met, we met with uh, Kosovo Serbs in, uh, in Kosovo, and they have the same uh, concern that you say, that they feel hostage, but not only of Belgrade, also of Pristina. So they want these rights, this time, with this association or whatever structure is going to be agreed, to feel uh, that their rights are respected and they need the structure that is working for them. So far, can you say that the rights that the Constitution uh, gives to them have been fulfilling their rights? Uh, because they are not feeling safe. But the reason why they are not feeling safe is because a number of criminal gangs that are led by people who are in the blacklist of the U.S. Treasury have been threatening them the vast majority of the Serbs, based on reports that we get from security institutions, on daily basis face threats and intimidation. There are cases when they are kidnapped, there are cases when their cars are being burned down, there are cases when their houses are being burned down, and there are cases when their kids at the kindergarten are being threatened. Of course, they do not feel safe, but they are not afraid of me. They have never been afraid of me. They need to not be kept hostage and threatened by Belgrade so that they can use these rights. They need protection so, from the institutions. Exactly, and that's exactly what we're offering. But what we need is not to fall in the trap of both sidism, so that when a police officer goes there to make these families safe, so we don't say, why did the police uh, of Kosovo deploy sure. to the north? This is not a deployment. They are in their own country, and they are there to protect these people who are vulnerable because of these criminal gangs who have to be fought by all of us. So we should not fall into the trap of creating a moral equivalency between the police officer of Kosovo who wants to keep the citizens faith, safe and a mafia-style uh, gang who are threatening I them. agree. Of course, both sides have to live up to their commitment. There is and no both sides in this case. On one well, side, it's the police trying to keep the citizens safe, and on the other side is the criminal gang, the mafia, who we should all fight, no matter their ethnicity. By the way, which is when it comes to, of the state yes, of Kosovo. When, when it comes to, to, to criminal gangs, they don't care about ethnicity. I have to say, they find yeah. friends even among Albanians, Bosniaks, Turks, and others. All of them are multi-ethnic, which is why our effort to fight these criminal gangs should be multi-ethnic as well. Serbia should not keep Kosovo Serbs hostage. 
it should leave them alone so that they can exercise the rights that are enshrined in Kosovo's constitution. Again, the best system out there mm -hmm. in the European continent. Will we have next week tech, uh, or the, the week following a uh, draft statute that is uh, changed from the vision that uh, Prime Minister Kurti proposed? Uh, we, can, we do have a lot of expert groups uh, who are working for quite some time to make sure that Kosovo's constitution, the constitutional court decision, and the best European systems, which is mentioned also in terms of Council of Europe instruments, uh, are studied in the best, best way possible so that these uh, 10 principles that were proposed on the 2nd of May can expand into concrete uh, provisions in the meantime. But of course, uh, so far we don't have a concrete date on when such meetings will take place um, in Brussels, but Kosovo is ready to provide for uh, all of these models in terms of making sure that all Kosovo citizens, including minority communities, can feel safe and included and they have an enhanced protection of their uh, human and minority rights. To what extent are Kosovo's institutions willing to address the concerns? We talked for about most of them, uh, of the concerns of the Serb community in northern Kosovo, but I'm talking specifically uh, treatment of the, and the lack of implementation of certain constitutional court decisions, including the decision protecting the monastery of Dechane. Why is the Dechane issue not resolved yet? There's only one decision, so not decisions uh, uh, when it comes to uh, the church property that has not been implemented yet. That is in, within the competences of the cadastral office. It's not within the competences of the president to like sign to whom belongs a land. But I can tell you from a legal point of view where uh, the concern lied. And that was because it relates to Milosevic decisions that were taken uh, under uh, a time where even Anmik had um, decided back in 1999 that every decision that was taken by Milosevic or a law from 89 to 99 should not be implemented because of its discriminatory nature. For some reason, uh, the Constitutional Court uh, of Kosovo decided to make that implementable, but the concern lies that because it could create an extremely dangerous precedent about every single Milosevic decision that was taken during the 90s. Uh, and it would create a complete mess in terms of what property belongs to, to whom. Because as you know, under Milosevic, it was all arbitrary decisions. He would just take the property of someone and give it to someone else. It was not like anything was based on law. Uh, but uh, we, we need to find a way forward. I need to, of course, uh, make sure that I... Uh, repeat all of the reassurances that we give as Kosovo institutions to uh, the Orthodox Church. Uh, so no one touches uh, their property. Uh, there have uh, been no serious incidents in the past decade or so. They are being protected by uh, Kosovo police yeah. and we really cherish uh, the role of all religions in Kosovo because we believe that diversity in this case is something w that we continue to be proud of. And as we know, Kosovo uh, Serbs, uh, they uh, have not returned yet to, their, uh, to the institutions. Do you expect anything to happen in that regard? And uh, in that uh, matter, uh, I was reading that the government had a draft decision uh, approved on expropriation uh, of land in uh, two municipalities, including the municipality of Leposavic. Uh, will this influence the, uh, the mood, the current mood of the Kosovo Serbs uh, there? There are constantly decisions by the Kosovo government for um, expropriation in line with the constitution, which is cases of public interest, obviously. Um, and uh, they happen in all municipalities. They don't only happen in the north. Uh, whenever there is a public interest, obviously there are cases, procedures need to be followed. That is extremely important. And there are clear procedures enshrined in the constitution and, and the law. But as long as procedures are followed, we should not create uh, the impression that different rules should apply in the north, different in the south, different in the east, and different uh, uh, somewhere in, in the west. Kosovo is one, and there's a principle of unitarity of state. So practically, if Kosovo institutions take decisions for the public interest, they use the same standards no matter <laughs> what communities live in a certain institution. As president, I can only insist that procedures, best international standards and constitutional procedures are followed in this case.
since we're running out of time, we had 30 minutes, but I want to conclude with a question looking towards the future. Uh, as you know, Kosovo is blessed to have the youngest uh, population in Europe uh, with a significant numbers of indiv individuals who are fluent in English. Uh, is Kosovo making the most of its youth dividend uh, to attract foreign investment uh, and to stimulate economic growth? I believe this is the best potential that we have. In fact, uh, looking at countries around the world, there's no single country that has achieved its full economic potential without mostly focusing in its human potential, its human capabilities. Kosovo is blessed to have the youngest population in Europe, but if not the right policies are pushed forward, that can become a burden. So what we have been doing these, in these past 10 years is making sure that the support for private security is mostly focused on incentives for employment, employment of youth and women, because in fact we have had one of the highest inactivity rates among women in, in the region and beyond. And this is of course, uh, uh, has quite a high return, both in terms of new jobs that are being created as well as on the capabilities that are then created for the country as such because of the inclusion of youth in the work market. Not only that they are multilingual and very young, but of course Kosovo has a lot of uh, bright sides to showcase to international uh, and foreign investors, which is what we're doing. And so far we have quite an increase on the interest of FDI and case uh, quite important countries, of course, who want to invest in Kosovo, but there's still a lot that needs to be done when it comes to investment in infrastructure, when it comes to continuous reform in legislation, and when it comes to creating a legal predictability for foreign direct investors. One of the things that really helped us out is because we are a champion on rule of law in fighting crime and corruption, because this creates legal predictability for foreign investors, and Kosovo has been doing better than the rest of the region. In fact, based on international indices, we are the third top reformer in the world when it comes to rule of law reforms. Very proud uh, of that, but there's a lot that we need to do to make sure that the justice system also delivers based on the best integrity standards as well as the principles of uh, lack of bias and independence in their judgments. Delighted to conclude with this positive uh, notes and uh, um, you know, results that is coming from Kosovo. Thank you very much for joining us here at the Atlantic Council's uh, headquarters in Washington, D.C. Thank you to our audience in person and thank you to all of you who uh, followed us uh, uh, virtually. Thank, thank you. you. Madam Great President. pleasure to talk to you.